Welcome back to the deep dive. Today, we're going to be diving into some sources focused on cybersecurity certification. Uh, specifically, we're looking at practice material for the CCFR 201B exam. That's right. But what these sources actually give us is a really good window into, well, a key part of modern cybersecurity, yeah. the Amaitiri ATT and CK framework. Exactly. So our mission really is to take these specific questions, these explanations, and kind of use them as a guide. Yeah. Unpack them. Pull out the core ideas about Amaitiri, ATT, and CK, you know, yeah. how it's structured, how it's used, both in the real world and for things like certs. It's a practical way in. Right, getting a handle on adversary behavior through these examples. And just for context, the sources mentioned a bit about this CCFR 201B exam itself. Seems pretty standard, really. Uh-huh. What does it say? Well, it's web-based, proctored so, supervised, either online or maybe at a Pearson VUE center. It's about 90 minutes long, maybe 60 questions. You need a 70% to pass, and it's in English. Okay, pretty typical setup for these kinds of exams. Yeah, and that context helps frame why understanding something like ATT and CK is so important. It's become like the common language you need to know, not just for exams, but for actually doing the job, defending systems. Absolutely. These frameworks, they aren't just abstract ideas for tests. They're practical tools. They catalog how real attackers operate, which is, well, essential if you're on the defense side. And these practice questions give us some solid, concrete examples to chew on. Exactly. Different pieces of the puzzle. So let's jump into those. The first question seems to be about an attacker trying to get uh, higher level permissions on a system, like moving from a normal user to an admin. Right. And the source identifies the tactic for that as privilege escalation. Okay. Privilege escalation. Yeah. The key thing is the goal. Mm -hmm. The attacker's probably already inside, maybe with basic access, yeah. but they need more power. To do what exactly? Well, it could be anything. Access sensitive data, install something nasty that stays there. Uh, maybe take full control of the machine. So privilege escalation is that specific objective. Get more access, get higher privileges. Okay, leveling up their power once they're in. That makes total sense. Um, shifting focus a bit, the next question asks about the impact tactic. What's the main goal there, according to the source? Impact. Well, that's often the part we hear about, the visible damage. The source says its main goal is messing with the availability or integrity of systems, services, or data. So like breaking stuff pretty much mm -hmm. think about uh wiping data completely or ransomware you know encrypting files so you can't use them mm -hmm. or even just shutting down critical systems it's about directly harming or disrupting the target's operations got it impact is the disruption the harm to the target stuff okay moving along the attack path another question brings up lateral movement and it mentions techniques like remote services rdp being an example what's this tactic all about lateral movement is well, it's exactly what it sounds like. Moving sideways, spreading out within a network after you've got that first entry point. Right, because attackers don't usually land right on the final target system. Exactly. They need to look around, find the valuable systems, get access to more machines, and techniques like using RDP remote desktop from one compromised computer to another, that's how they achieve the goal of moving deeper into the network. It's about expanding their control. Spreading the infection, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. That brings us to a question about uh, how ATT NCK is actually used. The source mentions its value during post-incident analysis. How does it help teams figure out what went wrong after an attack? Yeah, this is a huge strength of the framework. Imagine you're a defender looking at logs after a breach. You've got tons of technical data, right? A flood, probably. Exactly. Yeah. ATT NCK gives you a structure to make sense of it. Instead of just seeing, oh, this weird process ran, you can map that specific action to a known technique, like maybe system information discovery. Ah. That and that helps connect the docs. You see the technique, you understand the, tactic, the attacker's intent, and you can start building a clear story of the whole attack. It really speeds up investigations. That seems incredibly valuable. Turning raw data into, into attacker actions you can understand. Speaking of understanding, there's also a question about the discovery tactic specifically mentions system information discovery. What's the goal of discovery for an attacker? So once an attacker gets in, they're kind of flying blind initially. They don't know the network layout, what systems matter, what security tools are watching them. Right, they need to get their bearings. Precisely. Discovery is the tactic that covers all the things attackers do to learn about the environment they've landed in. Techniques like system information discovery, where they query the system for OS version, hardware details, user accounts, that kind of thing, that helps them map the terrain and figure out their next move. So discovery is like the attacker doing recon after they're already inside the walls. Okay. okay. This leads perfectly to maybe the most basic distinction in the framework. 
Another question tackles this. What is the difference between a tactic and a technique in MIDRE, ATT, and CK? This is absolutely fundamental. The source is clear. Tactics define the why. The adversary's objective. Why are they doing this? Is it to get initial access? To achieve persistence? To collect data? Your goal. Right. Techniques, on the other hand, describe the how. The specific methods or procedures the attacker uses to achieve that tactic, that goal. You give an example? Sure. Think of lateral movement. That's the objective, the tactic. But how do they do it? Maybe by using RDP or exploiting a remote service. Those are the techniques. Got it. Tactics, goals, techniques, and methods. That's clear. And it's not just for looking backwards, right? The source says ATT and CK is also useful for proactive defense. How does it help teams before or during an attack? Exactly. It's definitely not just a post-mortem tool. Defenders can use it to think like the adversary. They can look at specific techniques attackers use, say, for persistence or execution, right. and then design detection rules or monitoring, specifically looking for signs of those techniques happening on their system. Yeah. So instead of just blocking known bad files. Right. You start detecting the behavior. You see the actions an attacker takes when trying to, say, set up persistence. This allows for a much earlier detection and response. It shifts defense towards understanding and countering how attackers actually operate. That's a really smart approach, using the attacker's own playbook against them. Okay, let's look at another tactic mentioned. Collection. <laughs> and a technique under it. Screen capture. What's collection about? Collection is, well, the attacker grabbing the data they're actually interested in. Sensitive files, credentials, intellectual property, whatever their target is. The gathering phase. Exactly. This usually happens before they try to sneak the data out of the network, which is exfiltration. And techniques like screen capture, which the source mentions, are just specific ways to do it, literally taking screenshots of the victim's screen to grab information that's currently displayed. Okay, scooping up the goods. Let's rewind to the very start of an attack. A question covers initial access. The source lists techniques like valid accounts and supply chain compromise. What does initial access represent here? Initial access is that critical first step, getting your foot in the door of the target network or system. It's the breach point. And those techniques. They're common ways in. Using valid accounts means the attacker got hold of real usernames and passwords, maybe through phishing, or buying them online after another breach, or guessing weak ones and just logs in like a legitimate user. Sneaky. Very. And supply chain compromise is different. That's where attackers tamper with legitimate software or hardware before it even gets to the target. They might hide malware in a software update, for example. When the target installs the update, boom, the attacker has access. Wow, that's sophisticated. So initial access is literally just getting inside one way or another. Okay, one last piece mentioned in the source, a tool called the ATT and CK Navigator. What does that do? The Navigator is basically a visualization tool. It's web-based and it lets you see the whole ATT and CK matrix, all the tactics and techniques. Why is that useful? Well, analysts and defenders can use it to say, highlight all the techniques used by a specific hacker group. Mm. Or they can map out which techniques their own security tools can actually detect or visualize what happened in a specific incident. So it makes the framework more usable. Exactly. It helps communicate threat intelligence, spot defensive gaps, and prioritize where to focus security efforts, yeah. all based on this structured view of attacker behavior. It makes that huge matrix much less daunting and more actionable. It's an ongoing process, not a one-time learn. Definitely something to keep in mind as the threat landscape keeps shifting. Indeed. Well, that wraps up this deep dive. Thanks for joining us.